Hello everyone, and welcome back to the lab. It's been more time than I care to admit since the last video, but I'm finally back. In this video, I'll be preparing some palladium on carbon, a versatile hydrogenation catalyst. Palladium on carbon of the 5 and 10% variety are readily available online, although they are relatively expensive. A gram of 5% palladium on carbon is going to cost you somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 dollars. That amount of palladium on carbon only contains a couple dollars of palladium metal, so it can be quite a lot cheaper to make it yourself. My starting point was palladium metal. I bought a 1 gram ingot for around 45 dollars. The first step in preparing palladium on carbon was dissolving the palladium to get it into a form that can be deposited on the carbon. Palladium will dissolve into nitric acid at room temperature, although the reaction is very slow. In order to dissolve any usable amount of palladium, you'll have to heat the mixture. After several hours, it didn't look like that much had dissolved, so I added in some hydrochloric acid in the hopes that it would speed it up. Eventually, I got impatient, so I poured off the solution and weighed the remaining piece of palladium to find out that I dissolved point six grams of the metal, which was enough for my purposes. This palladium solution could probably be used for the reaction, but I wasn't sure if the nitric acid would interfere and the preparation I was following called for palladium chloride, so the next step was precipitating out the palladium using a few grams of potassium hydroxide. This gave me a nice chocolatey brown precipitate, which then had to be filtered off. The problem was, it was so fine that it immediately clogged my glass frit, and it was filtering so slow that it would never have finished. It turned out to not be a big deal though, because I found that simply heating the mixture caused the particles to stick together and settle out rather quickly. At this point, I must have gotten distracted by another project because all of the palladium ended up sitting on the bench for around 5 months. I found all of the palladium materials when I was cleaning up my lab, and I decided to start working on it again. Using some 6 molar hydrochloric acid, I washed all the palladium into one flask. After sitting for a couple of hours, everything dissolved and I was left with a nice clear red palladium solution. During that time, I started preparing the carbon. My carbon source is some activated carbon, and I measured out about 10 grams, maybe a little bit more. I put the activated carbon in a beaker and covered it with some 10% nitric acid. I then put this on my hot plate and let it heat up to around 60 or 70 Celsius and let it sit there for a few hours. After heating, I let it cool down and filtered off the carbon. I also washed it several times with water until it was no longer acidic. I then put the carbon on the side to dry and began preparing a formaldehyde solution. My source of formaldehyde is paraformaldehyde, and the preparation I was looking at called for a 37% solution. To prepare this, I mixed together water, paraformaldehyde, and a tiny bit of potassium hydroxide, and let it stir on my hot plate with some heating until everything dissolved. After doing all these steps, I had everything that I needed to make the palladium on carbon. I added my acid-washed carbon to a beaker and covered it in water. I then got this heating on the hot plate and heated it up to 80 degrees Celsius. At the same time, I heated up the palladium solution so the temperature would stay around 80 C when I poured it in. When everything was up to temperature, I poured in the palladium chloride solution. And this was immediately followed by the formaldehyde solution. I then quickly used some 30% sodium hydroxide solution to adjust the pH to neutral. After this, I let the solution sit and stir for around 5 minutes. Then I took it off the hot plate and let it cool down to room temperature. The carbon started to settle out and you could see that the solution was no longer colored. This meant that all the palladium had been reduced. The palladium on carbon was filtered off, not using a glass frit because that would become clogged with carbon particles. It was washed several times with water. The palladium on carbon was then allowed to dry in the air for a little while, and when it was mostly dry, it was transferred into my drying pistol, which I was really using as a vacuum desiccator, and it was allowed to dry over some calcium chloride for around a day. After drying, the palladium on carbon was free-flowing and could be transferred to a bottle for storage. In the end, I got around 11 grams of approximately 5% palladium on carbon. 
If you were to buy it, this mount would probably cost you over $100, and I was able to make it for around $25. In order to test its catalytic ability, I decided to try and ignite some hydrogen with it. I set up a small hydrogen generator using sodium hydroxide and aluminum, and I positioned a Q-tip with a very small amount of the catalyst on it in front of the tube. First, it heated up, and then it ignited the hydrogen. My plans for this catalyst are to reduce some pyridine derivatives, and that might show up in a future video, although I can't say how soon that'll be. This video was made possible by the incredible support from those on Patreon. I have received incredibly generous support from Jay, Rodenide, and the gayest person on YouTube, as well as Mackie, Oliver T, Andrew R, Aussie Chemist, Cliff's Music Lab, and Piper Liam. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I'll see you in the next one.